hymnal, turn to hymn number 162. For those of you watching at home, if you don't have a hymnal, we're going to be singing to God be the glory, and we're going to sing all three verses. Oh, 
Beth is, uh, as you can see, isn't here. She's, uh, I'm pretty sure, it's sinus issues that she's having um, issues with. So keep her in your prayers. And uh, so many others uh, in our family alone not able to be here. Uh, so please keep uh, Vanessa and Dakota uh, in your prayers. And then uh, Jedediah and the twins as well. And then uh, remember, if you haven't marked it on your calendar, July 3rd, a Saturday at 5 o'clock, we're going to be having a cookout here in Dean Johnson with Dean Johnson Music. And Zephyr Hills is going to be here providing uh, special music, so we're excited about that. All right, uh, we'll receive the offering, and then uh, go from there. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the opportunity we have to come back tonight and gather together in your house. And we do ask that you would have your hand on all those that are not feeling well, whether it be uh, dealing with uh, allergies or teething or uh, the other physical problems that folks have. Um, Tommy's papal having surgery tomorrow. Uh, others having surgery later this month. We do ask that you would have your hand upon them that things would go well. We do pray for the offering tonight that it, you would accept it from a grateful and a joyful heart and that it would be used for the furtherance of the gospel. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen.
take your Bibles and go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3. Start reading in verse number one. Philippians 3, verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evildoers, beware of concession. For we are in for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit, and we rejoice in in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might have, I might also have had confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, touching the righteousness. With which is in the law blameless, but what but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. And being found in Him, not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being, being, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also apprehend of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do for do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So here in Philippians 3, Paul is finishing up, getting towards the end of his letter to the church of Philippi, and he begins to, in verse 4, say that there's he, he kind of gives us his testimony a little bit of his testimony Paul begins to, to talk about how he says you know if there's anyone in verse 4 he says though there, that I might have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinketh that he hath where, whereof he might trust in the flesh I more Paul was, was saying listen I know there are some out there that, that trust in their flesh that trust that they can do things in their flesh but if any man really thinks that he could trust in his flesh, I can give, he, he says, I have more reason why I could trust in my flesh than you. And he goes on to give his, uh, his testimony there. He says, I wasn't just a, a Hebrew. I was a, he goes, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. You know, I was a Pharisee. You know, you, you also find Paul in some of his other writings, Pete tells in, uh, or it's actually in Acts, we read that Paul was taught by Gamaliel. And for those of you who may not know, Gamaliel it was is a uh, well-known teacher of, of uh, Israel's history. He was at that point in time the most respected man, most respected teacher in, in Israel concerning teaching the the Pentateuch, the Bible uh, to the to the Israelites and teaching them about their history. He was, I mean, if you if anything you wanted, I mean, to say, hey, I got taught by Emilio, and you had a reason to say I had the best teacher there ever was. And that's what Paul was saying. You know, he's saying I was I wasn't just a Hebrew. I was a Pharisee. You know, I was I was one who taught the law with others. I was respected by others. You know, if, if someone needed counseling about something, they came to me. I was a Pharisee. He goes on to say, and because I was so good at what I did, and he kind of says, you know, I was one who persecuted the church. He he goes on to say, you know, I uh, there in verse six concerning zeal persecuting the church. He said I had zeal. For, for what I was doing. 
I, I thought what I was doing was right. He said, I went out and persecuted the church. And, and that's what we find, again, in Acts, to, to back it up there in Acts uh, chapter 8. When Paul eight and nine, when we find Paul's conversion from Saul from Saul of Tarsus to Paul, um, he was he was given letters by the Pharisees to go and get those who followed after Christ and to bring them back to face punishment. Right. I mean, Paul Paul was saying, "Listen, I was I was a the, the one of anything, right? I was I was a Pharisee. I had zeal. I have everything." But he says. Yea, you know, how he puts it in verse 8, he says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He said, everything that I had, that as far as being a Pharisee and as, as far as my worldly stature and, and, and my, my uh, popular position amongst the, the teachers and, and, and the land, I give it all up because I want to serve Christ. I count it all for loss. It means nothing to me now. Because I want to follow and serve Christ. And looking at these verses and looking at a few others tonight, I want to talk about and look at, you know, the the cost of, of, of following Christ. You know, it's Pastor kind of hinted at it this morning in, in his message, and we're, we're gonna look at that again tonight. But you know, we have to we have to consider all things when it comes to following Christ. It's not just something that you can make as a a, a half-hearted decision. You know, and it kind of goes along with what Nathaniel was teaching this morning in Sunday school about Jonah. You know, Jonah was 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 a prophet that God had, um, you know, called to, to to deliver His message, and that meant that he had surrendered his life to go wherever God had called him to go. But Jonah wasn't fully committed to it because he didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to go there and, and, and preach God's message to them. He he was like, no. I don't want to give these people your message, God, because I know what you're going to do. He didn't. I mean, rightfully so. People didn't like Ninevites because they they were they weren't nice people. Yeah. They they were very rough people. You know, they, as Nathaniel mentioned, you know, they were a city in Assyria. And Assyria was the known conquerors of the world. Nineveh had a reputation for being a very rough bunch. If you were to look at, at uh, ancient history, they were a rough group of people. And and Jonah was like, I don't want to go. You know, but when we we say, I'm going to follow Christ. I'm going to give myself to, to, to Christ to follow him and do whatever he wants. You have to, to consider the cost, what it's going to be. Now, it's not it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad cost. You know, and as, as we're going to look at, you know, there's there's rewards for us listening and obeying Christ and following him. But the, the first thing I want to look at is that we have to consider that cost. Look at a go to, to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. I feel like I have a cotton ball in my mouth this afternoon. And I don't know why. Because I don't have any cotton. Luke 14. Verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and he said unto them, If any man come to me and hat and hate not his father and his mother and his wife, and his children and his brethren, and his sisters, yea, his own own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth that down first, counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, he, is be, he all, finish it all that he behold, and, be, and being, begin to mock himself, mock him, saying that this, saying this man begun to build that and was not able to finish or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet that cometh against him with twenty thousand or else while the other is yet great way, a great way off he sendeth an ambassage and desired conditions of peace so likewise whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath he cannot be my disciple so Jesus is, is here, and there's a, as we see, there's a great multitude with him. 
And he turns to them and he says, listen guys, this isn't something you can do just because everyone else is doing it. Because I, I imagine Jesus, anywhere Jesus went, you see the twelve, and I imagine it was like this quite commonly. There was a group that followed Jesus, whether it was you know, people who were, were just wanting to hear him teach and stuff, or people desiring to be healed and whatnot. You know, there was always a group that followed, I imagine there was a group that followed him. And he looks at them and he says, listen guys, you can't just follow me because this is a popular thing to do right now. You can't just be following me because everyone else is wanting to follow me. You know, and and I've been, I, I, I've seen that at times where people have, you know, I, I think of someone when I was in college, we, we were going to, uh, it was the beginning of the school year, and we were going to another church to help pass out flyers in their area because they were having a, a, a big day. They were having their, their pastor was celebrating his anniversary, so we were going over there to, uh, on a day off to help pass out flyers in the area and help them. And on the way over there, you know, people are, uh, on the bus I was on, you know, were sharing their testimonies and stuff, and, and, and you know, and this one guy got real excited about it all. And, you know, and he stood up and said that, you know, he was he was there to, to, to serve the Lord and he wanted the Lord, you know, he right, you know, at that moment felt the Lord was calling him to preach and whatnot. And that's what he was going to set himself to do. But then not even a month later, he was was leaving school. He he was packing his stuff to, to leave college because his girlfriend back home had he he had told his girlfriend back home what his plans were. And his girlfriend said, "Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to stay with you if you want to be a preacher. I'm not going to. I don't want to be a, a, a pastor's wife. I, that's not what I want to be in life." And so she was going to leave him. And so in order for her not to leave him, he left and he went back on what he said he believed the Lord was calling him to do, because it, to him he got so caught up in it and was excited with everything going on. He he thought it was the popular thing. He felt like it was the popular thing, but because it, it feels like the popular thing, you can't you can't just jump on board with it and, and go gun ho. Because just because it's popular doesn't mean everyone everyone you know it's it's not the thing for everyone. And that's what Christ is saying here. He says, "Listen, if, you, if you, Pastor Pastor explained it so perfectly this morning, it's not that you 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 hate them. The the as as the passage there talks about." It's not that you, you, you hate your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your family. It's that you don't you, you love them, you don't love them more than you love Christ. You don't desire to, to please them more than you desire to please Christ. You know, and it, it should be Christ first in our life. As again, referencing pastors of message, you know, Christ should be our first love. He Amen. should be the one that, you know what, it, it as as it was explained to me as a kid and it kind of stuck and when, it, when I think of how it should be, it should be Jesus, others, and myself when it comes to, to how I should love and put things in perspective. I should love Jesus most of all. I should love others, and i got to love myself. And if I do it in that order, you know, it, you know, it'll work out. But Jesus was saying, listen, if you, if you value them, love them, seek to please them more than you do me, then you can't follow me. Because we also read where the Bible says that man can't serve two masters. We, because you will love the one and hate the other, so it, it has to. We have to make up the decision to who are you going to follow. You know, who are you? How are you going to serve? Are you going to, you know? He he says there also. You know, you got to count the cost. You know, and he gives the example of, of a king going to war. A king doesn't foolishly just make a decision to go to war without first considering, hey. Is it going to cost me this much men, or is it going to cost me this much men? Do I need to send this many troops, or can he be like, you know what? We don't even have to go to war. We can make peace. You know, we you have to consider all the things. You know, and there are you, you know you have to be to be willing to follow Christ and allow Him to change your life, because that's exactly what He's going to do. He's going to change your life if you let Him. And and it's not you know, it's not an easy decision to make to say you know what Lord. I'm going to give up my hopes and dreams to follow you. That is, that's, that's not an easy, at least for me. I, I'll speak from my own personal experience. For me, it wasn't easy to say, Lord, I am going to do what you want more than what I want. Because, you know, I, I simply, I just wanted to coach football. That's, that's what I wanted to do. I love, I love the game of football, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, to, 
you know, get the, a degree in secondary education and then work on, uh, work on coaching. You know, that's, that's, what, that's what my goal was. But when the Lord started laying on my heart to the, the call to preach, when, it, when I felt the Lord was calling me to preach, that was something that was, it was hard for me to say, Lord, I'm going to give up what I want to do. Because I felt like I had never done what I actually wanted to do. And that's why it was hard for me. Because I was saying, you know what, I'm going to do what someone else wants. But this wasn't just any old someone, you know, it's God. You know, so it's different there. But I, it was hard for me to say, you know, it was hard for me to come to the reality and say, oh, hey, I'm going to give up what I want to do because I want to serve you, Lord. And each of us, no matter what it may be, even just, just deciding to, to live a life in general for Christ, not necessarily giving your life to full-time Christian service and, and and serving in the church all the time, but being a faithful Christian, a, a faithful servant of Christ, it's, it's still going to cost you something, and you have to consider that, what that cost is. You know, and it's not the, the most popular thing to do. You know, 2 Timothy 3.12 tells us, yea, all who live godly shall suffer persecution. You sure. know, that's, that's not a promise I want, but it's a promise right there. You live for God, you'll suffer persecution. You know, it'll come from friends, it'll come from family. I've had it come from both, but yet I still chose to serve the Lord, you know, and Satan will bring it back up to you at times too. He'll remind you, especially when you feel like, you know what, everyone's just turned against you. You know, he'll, he'll remind you, man, you could have been doing something else and it would have been so much better than this. You wouldn't have to put up with this. Yeah. You wouldn't have to deal with the, the negative comments. You wouldn't have to deal with, you know, what, someone being upset with you because you're 1,100, 1,200 miles away from where you grew up. You're not with your friends, you know. Satan will throw that in your face, but it's still a choice you have to make. You know, it, 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 it'll cost us. It's, and again, it'll cost us more than just friendships and stuff, but it'll cost you your possessions too. Yeah. I, I, I'm reminded of the, Greek, the the rich young ruler, you know, where, where the, he came. To, the Bible doesn't just say he came to He ran to Jesus, as the Bible said. He ran to him and said, Lord, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him, sell all your possessions and come follow me. And he, and the Bible says that he couldn't do it because he had great possessions and sorrow him. Mm -hmm. You know, think of the disciples. You know, uh, Peter and, and his brother, when Jesus called them to serve, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They were fishermen themselves. They had boats. They had nets. They, they had a living. And Jesus said, follow me. And they, I mean, we read that the Bible says they didn't even give it a second thought. They just, they went and followed Jesus. But that cost them something to do that. You know, and it has to be, you know, following Christ will, will call, again, you know, I, I hinted at it. It will cost you your wants and your desires. It will, my want and desire was, was to coach, and it cost me that. You know, but there's, there's, you know, there's a positive side to that, right? When your wants and desires line up with the Lord wants and desires, He will bless you for it. And, and I'll prove it. Look at Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. When what you want and desire lines up with what God wants and desires for you, the Lord will bless you. And we see that there. You know, it may, it's not going to, it may not be, to the exact degree that you want, but the Lord is still going to bless you. He is still going to hold you, hold up your, and bless you because you've decided to follow Him. You know, and it's and again, it's not a part-time decision you can do. It's not something you can say I'm going to do on on just Sundays and Wednesdays because those are the days I go to church. You, it's not a a, a part-time job serving Christ. It's a full-time thing following Him and serving Him. So it's it's it, you know. It's, again, it's not the easiest decision you have to make because it's something you have to consider. You you seriously have to, you know, and I, and I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm overstating it, but it's you have to consider everything when it comes to whether or not you are going to be 
fully committed to serving the Lord. You, you have to seriously consider the cost because there are a lot of people that don't fully consider that cost and what it will cost them. And it leads to a lot of people having, you know, the testimony of, man, they, they looked like they were going to serve the Lord, but then something happened. You know, they, they were doing good, but they gave in because it is a hard road. The Bible calls it a narrow path. Pastor alluded to that. We preached on that a couple Sundays ago, the narrow path. You know, it's, it's a narrow path that we walk, but it's worth it because we, we see following Christ, there, there is a reward. Uh, go back to Mark. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And while you're turning there again, it's all but it. He said, uh, there back in, in the text we read, Philippians 3, he said, that I may know him and, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already attained, neither or either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which is also I may apprehend of Christ. Paul said, you know, he, he counted it all of, of what he did. He said, I counted the cost and I counted it but dumb. And he said, because I wanted to apprehend Christ. I want to, to follow after Christ. I want to seek Christ. The knowledge of Christ. I want to be loyal to Christ. I want to go after him. Uh, you're in Mark chapter 10. Look at verse 28. Mark 10 verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto the Lord. Began, or then Peter began to say unto him. Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said. Verily I say unto you. There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters. Or father or mother, or wife or children, or lands for my, for my sake in the Gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers, and children and lands with the perceptions, or with the, with the, with the, percussion, with the perceptions, and in the world that came to eternal life. But many that, but many that are first shall be last, and, all, and the last shall, and the last first. You know, Peter Peter began to say, Lord, we left it all to follow you. What's 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 in it for us? This is kind of how I think Peter put it. That's not the wording of the Bible, that's my wording. He said, Lord, we left all to follow you. What's in it for us that we've done this? You know, and I think it, it, you know, again, Peter's thinking, I had a successful business. I, I was making a good living. Lord, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but what's in it for me that I'm following you? And the Lord goes on to tell him, you know, there, there are those that have all counted the cost and done it, Peter. But there, your, your reward is not just here on earth, it's in heaven. It's, it's in the long run is what you're going to be rewarded as. You know, and, and for us, our reward is not just here on earth. It's, it's great to see that reward on earth when, you, when you've taken the time to witness to someone and you've planted those seeds and you've watered that seed and you get to reap that harvest. You know, it's, it's, it's a blessing to see a soul saved. It's a blessing to see someone Amen. who you've been spending time with come back to the Lord that may have been away from the Lord and see them come back and get, get that fire again beginning to burn in them. It's, 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 it's a blessing to see those come to the church and, and join the church. Those are, those are benefits and rewards I get to see now. But it's the ones I get in heaven that are going to be worth it all. It's, it's going to be getting to heaven and having my heavenly father say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I, if you were faithful in the little things, I'm going to make you a ruler over many. It's, it's going to be worth it one day to be able to take the crowns I earned that are in heaven and cast them back to my Savior's feet and say, Lord, I couldn't have done it if I didn't follow you. I couldn't have done it if I didn't have you. It's going to be worth it all one day. To, you know, and that's, that's something we often, and I've been guilty of it, I've lost sight of that. Because I want that instant satisfaction now. Because that's that's the kind of society we live in. we got to have it now. We have to have our reward now. We've got to have it now. And we lose sight of that long goal, that long-term goal. But there is a reward in the end for, for following Christ. There is that reward of getting, you know, not only is it eternal life because I'm saved, but it's being able to see friends and loved ones again who are also saved that have gone on before. It's, it's going to be a reward to spend an eternity with Christ. 
not spending an eternity separated from him burning in hell. That, that alone should be reward enough for you to say, Lord, if I, even if I get nothing else in the end, Lord, that's more than enough for me to serve you. Amen. That's more than enough for me to say, Father, I, I, I'll follow you wherever you will lead. But there is a reward for us in the end. We have to not lose sight of that, not lose, not lose the, the interim goal, but be focused on it. Again, that's what, that's what Paul said again in Philippians 3.14. He said, I press toward the mark. He said, I, I've got my eyes on that end goal. That is the thing that drives me every day to keep serving the Lord is that there is a prize at the end for me to keep pushing towards, you know. And, and, and so we see that we have to count the cost. There is a reward, but there, is, there, are, there are many who are not willing to pay the price to follow Christ. And that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's hard to hear. And that's sad to think about, right? Because I... I ha I've experienced a little bit of it, right? I've gotten it, and, and the, since I've been saved, I, you know, well, yesterday, today's the 13th, right? I just not stopping to think about it. Friday made 10 years since I've been saved. I didn't even think of that. Amen. Friday's been 10 years since I accepted the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior. And in that 10 years, I've gotten a little taste of, of, of the rewards following Christ. But I also have, have seen others in that time that said, Lord, it's, it's, it's not worth it. It's, it's not worth it. Look at look at uh, John's John chapter. We're actually here in Mark. We'll stay here in Mark. Uh, verse 17. Mark 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good, but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and, and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, and sell whatsoever things that thou hast. And give all to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at the same, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. I, I, I mentioned it earlier, but the, the rich young ruler, who come running to Jesus and said, Lord, how can I have it all? How can I have eternal life? And Jesus very plainly told him what he needed to do. And he was not willing to do that. And, he, and the Bible says he went away grieved. Yeah. Because of what he was going to have to do. Uh, I mentioned John. Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John 6. Verse 66. And just to give you a little refresher, Jesus in, in John 6 has been teaching and preaching uh, uh, for a while here with a group that's been following him. And it's, and it's led us to verse 66. And it says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Jesus, and, and it was, you, you read through John 6, Jesus was preaching hard to them and teaching them some tough things and telling them some things that people weren't liking. And we see what happened when, when they began to hear that. When they began to hear what was going to go on and what was going on, it says many of them turned and left Jesus. Many of them turned and left. And Jesus, you know, I think this is, 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 is us getting to see Jesus's Full 100% man side, right? Because I, I, I don't, I have a time, trouble at times, fully wrapping my mind around that he's 100% God and he's 100% man, and and knowing that he was experiencing the thoughts and feelings of man, he turns to the 12 that have been with him for at this point in time, maybe a year or more, I would say, and says, "Will ye also go away?" Right? He he's seen the group that was with him, and I believe it excited him to see those that were with him. And he's seen them go away because they didn't like what he was saying. And he turned to his, his 12 that he had called and he said, 
What about you guys? Are, are you going to go away too? Yeah. When, when following Christ, for those that, that, that aren't willing, and for those of us that are willing to follow, you're going to hear hard things at times from God's Word. You're going to get to, to, to that point in life where you're going through something rough, and it's just going to seem like it's going to get rougher because of what, what the preacher's saying. You know, you're going to feel like the preacher's against you. And I, and I can tell you, from, at least for me, I don't know the pastor. Well, actually, I know the pastor's not against you. you know, but I'm not against anyone here. I don't know the business of everyone's daily life. Right? And so because it's something I preach you don't like, I promise you I didn't have you in mind when I was putting together the lesson that God was giving me. God yeah. had you in mind and wanted me to say it. That's right. You know, and it's not that and it's not that we're doing it to be mean. You know, we're we're preaching what God has given us. And it's the Lord saying, Listen, this is something rough, you're not gonna like it, but you need to hear it. And that's that's the great thing about Christ, you know, how the Bible calls him our friend. Because a true friend is one who's going to tell you something you don't like, don't want to hear when you need to hear it. Yeah. You know, and you know, I've had, uh, I've told, I've told Vanessa at times. You know, we we've been talking, and and she'll she'll say, you know, she'll apologize for something. And I said, this is where you fall into the category of not only being my wife but being a friend and being a true friend because you told me something I didn't want to hear when I needed to hear it. You know, there's there's that's that's the kind of friend Jesus is. You know, he's going to tell you something you don't want to hear when you need to hear it because he loves you, because he cares about you, because he has your best in mind. You know, and, and Jesus looks at his 12, the 12 disciples and he said, Work, are you guys also going to leave me? And I love Peter's response here in verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Peter says, Lord, we've got nowhere else to go. You have the answer. You have the words of eternal life. Yeah, we may not have liked it, what you were saying, but it's what we needed to hear. And that's what a lot of people today need to know. You know, they, they need to be willing to pay that price to say, yeah, I'm going to get my toes stepped on. I'm going to find something I don't like, but I need to hear it. And Lord, you're the one that's going to tell me it, so I'm going to keep following. You know, I'm reminded of, of, of Paul in 2 Timothy 4, verse 10, where Paul talks about Demas. Paul says, and Demas half forsaking me having loved this present life. Demas was one who, who was following the Lord, but Demas got sidetracked by this present life, got sidetracked in the world, and the world's going to do its best to distract you and, and throw what it can at you because that's the world's job. Yeah. That's its job is to distract you, and Satan's going to use the, the flashing lights and the, and the big rewards of instant satisfaction and you know, satisfaction and guarantee you know, to say, hey, do it now. But it's not worth it. It's it's not worth going back to an old lifestyle to leave following the Lord. It's not worth saying, you know what, Lord, I, I, I'm tired of being pushed around and bullied and, and, and hated on. You know, I'm I'm, going, I'm I'm quitting. Is basically what you're saying. I'm quitting. I'm giving up. And we can't quit and give up. But but side note, Chase the Rabbit, if you do give up, if you do quit, and you have, and you're here tonight, and you have. You can make it right with the Lord and you can come back. First John Amen. 1 9 is still in the Bible. He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can get back on following Him. You can you can rekindle that fire and start serving the Lord again. You know, but there are a lot today that, that are taught and, and it's preached today in different churches that you know what? You can come to Christ as you are and leave as you are, and He'll still bless you. He's still gonna to bless your life if you come as you are and leave as you are. It, it doesn't work that way. Again, as I mentioned, you have to be willing to, to, to let the Lord change you as you follow Him. You know, I I have found that the Lord has is, 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 is made me a little softer, I guess you would say. Has it's, it's, it's softened my heart some of the things I used to, to be a little more callous to. You know, I was telling a preacher it's been a couple of weeks back, but I, him and I were, were doing some running, getting some stuff, and I told him that I was listening to someone I used to listen to uh, a, a preacher I used to listen to, and you know this preacher, I forget what he was exactly preaching on, but he was he was basically beating people over the head with with the Bible for not believing and for believing differently than he did, you know. And I told preacher, I said I can't believe I used to be that type of person. That's how I used to believe, you know, because this preacher said it, I used to believe it, and that's how I used to to do it, you know. And the Lord has softened me much on that. 
You know, I used to think, you know what, the Bible said you have to do it now. Dang. There was no period of grace to let the Lord work. You know, I used to be the one, as I said, I used to I used to beat people, browbeat people with my Bible, you know. But the Lord has softened me because of that. You know, he's, he's, he's made me, he's giving me grace to be like, you know what, you don't need to browbeat people. Just let me take care of them. You know, let me handle it. You know, and, and we have to be willing to let the Lord, let the Lord work and let the Lord do his job. And lastly, there there is a, a punishment, or not a punishment, well, yeah, a punishment, but there is a cost for us not following the Lord. Paul said, I, I press toward the mark, I press toward the prize. And we see that those that, that stop following the Lord, they lose that prize. They lose reward in heaven because they don't follow him. The Bible tells us in, in, in 1 Corinthians that one day we're going to stand before the Lord, before his judgment seat. And, and our, we're going to have our, our works here on earth cast into the fire. And some will go in as, as wood, hay, and stubble, and other as gold and, and precious stone. And they'll go through that fire. And the Bible says that some will be burned up, but some will be come out the other side. And we're, those are the rewards we're going to get, but we're going to cast back at Jesus' feet. I would hate to have a pile of rewards that was yay high. And it all go through the fire and burn up because I didn't, I didn't have the right mindset. Because I said, you know what? I'm going to follow the Lord, but I'm not going to follow Him. I'm not going to count the cost, but I don't want others to think badly of me. And, and to watch my reward go through that fire and all burn up and have nothing to throw back at Jesus' feet. It's going to cost you. It'll cost you reward in heaven. And, you know, and, it, and it also will cost you in your faith. It'll be an empty faith. Because you're not willing to take that time to trust the Lord. You're saying, Lord, I can't trust you. I can't trust you to, to provide for me. I can't trust you, Lord, to take care of me. Lord, I can't trust you to keep me because I can't count that cost. I can't do it, Lord. I'm, I'm, and, I, and again, as I mentioned, it, it is a scary thing. At least it was to me. And it, it can be hard, but it's something we all have to consider. You have to consider for yourself. Are you willing to... To pay that price to follow Christ. And, and, and Paul is a great example. Paul said I had it all. I was, I was a well respected person. I was a Hebrew. I was a Pharisee. I had the best teaching. I had it all. I had zeal. And I counted all of dung. Because I want to follow Christ. I want to pursue after Christ. And Paul Paul's an excellent example to, to look at. You can read in Acts. About some of the stuff Paul went through. And you can read through what he said. You know. Paul said, listen, it, it wasn't easy for me to follow Christ. I was beaten multiple times. I was left for dead. I was shipwrecked. But yet here I am. I'm still following the Lord even after all this has happened to me. Because I press towards the mark. I press towards the prize. I want the end goal. I want to hear my Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to be, I want to please the Lord. It doesn't matter what man does to me. It's more important what the Lord thinks of me and how the Lord looks at me. That was Paul's goal, was to say, Lord, I want to serve you. And again, for us, we all have to consider that we have to, you know, and, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you, if for you it's too much to follow the Lord, then that's, that's what you have to decide. You know, if you, if you, if you count it all and you say, Lord, I just can't, then you need to ask the Lord for more faith to say, Lord, I can't. Because I, my personal opinion is I believe we should all be willing to do whatever the Lord calls us to do. Whether that's just be a, a faithful church member or if, if he called you to preach, if he called you to give your life to him, to teach in a way, no matter what it may be. I believe we should all be willing to say, Lord, I will do whatever you want. And just because you say, Lord, I'll do what you want doesn't mean the Lord's going to turn around and say, oh, okay, you're willing now. I'm going to send you here to do this. It may never happen. But I believe we should all be willing to say, Lord, I will do whatever you want Amen. when you want me to. And so we, again, we have to count the cost. And in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, and you have to figure it out for yourself. But I believe it's worth it all in the end. At least what I read in my Bible, and I find my Bible to be true, it's all worth it in the end to say, Lord, I want to follow you. Amen. But again, that's, that's my choice. That's my opinion. You have to make your own decisions. So we will go ahead and pray and then be dismissed. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the day you've given us. Lord, thank you uh, for allowing us to come into your house and worship you tonight.
Father, I just ask that uh, you help us to count the cost, Lord, and, and when it comes to following you. And Lord, I pray that if there's one here tonight that is struggling to, to make the decision to follow you, Lord, that is that is counting the cost, Lord, I pray that you give them the, the wisdom they need, the faith they need, the strength they need to take the step to follow you. Father, I just ask that you be with those that weren't able to be here tonight. Just uh, touch those that, are, that aren't feeling well, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you remind us of your presence as we go about our separate ways and bring us back at the next appointed time. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.